Jerry Lewis passed away earlier this week. You either like Jerry very much or you loathe Jerry very much. Or if you're a resident of France, you probably loved Jerry very much. There are plenty of eulogies online about Jerry Lewis, so I won't duplicate that in this space. Rather, the passing of Jerry gives me that proverbial news peg that allows me to give a shout out to a 1982 film that would turn out to be in the decades that followed eerily prescient. The film I speak of is Martin Scorsese's masterpiece, The King of Comedy. Jerry Lewis co-starred in the film along with the titular character played by Robert De Niro. Part of the brilliance of The King of Comedy was having both actors play against type. In his role of TV talk show host Jerry Langford, Jerry Lewis puts his clown act in the closet and plays it straight, and wow, he's a great straight man. Meanwhile, De Niro plays the cringe-inducing loser, Rupert Pupkin, in what has to be considered one of his best roles ever. Check out some excerpts from the original trailer. And what I'm thinking as I'm sitting here now, well, maybe this is my big break, this is my big chance, you know what I mean? You don't just walk on to a network show without experience. Now, I know it's an old hackneyed expression, but it happens to be the truth. You've got to start at the bottom. I know, that's where I am, at the bottom. That's a perfect place to start. His name is Rupert Pupkin. He lives in a world of make-believe. Oh, Jerry, I love this guy. Always coming up with these great lines. I love him, I love him. Nobody can remember his name. Mr. Pipkin. Mr. Pupnik. Mr. Puffer. Rupert. Pupkin, P-U-P-K-I-N. But by 11.30 tonight, the whole world will know that Rupert Pupkin is the new king of comedy. Now, if you haven't seen the king of comedy, stop watching this commentary right now as spoilers are coming down the pike. But if you have indeed seen this film, perhaps you share my awe that in the three and a half decades since its release, the world has become inundated with numerous kings and queens of comedy. I speak not of comedians, but people who have achieved fame, not for having a particular talent or skill set, but rather for doing something notorious. In The King of Comedy, Rupert Pupkin is an aspiring wannabe comedian desperate for a break. But rather than slug it out honing his craft in comedy clubs to get experience, Pupkin wants to start at the very top, being a featured comedian on Jerry Langford's national TV show. The only hitch is that Pupkin is, well, <laughs> he's not primetime material. He's not an awful comedian, but he's far from brilliant. After being repeatedly turned down to appear on Langford's show, Pupkin kidnaps the star at gunpoint and holds him hostage. Pupkin doesn't want ransom money for Langford's release, but rather just a few minutes of airtime so he can do his shtick in front of a national TV audience. His wish is granted, and in the aftermath, of course, Pupkin is arrested and found guilty of kidnapping and serves a prison sentence, but upon release, that oh-so-elusive fame is instantly realized from a best-selling autobiography to a major motion picture deal and even his very own national TV show. But it is not because of his talent, which is marginal at best, his success is driven by infamy. Some 35 years after the release of The King of Comedy, a legion of Rupert Pupkins abound. Hey, the freak show no longer has a place down on the midway, but it lives on nevertheless in that biosphere of the bizarre known as reality TV and, of course, the Internet. So it is that the likes of Honey Boo Boo and Octomom are household names for the most dubious of reasons, whereas there are those who are famous simply for <laughs> being famous, such as the Cardassians or Paris Hilton. Like Rupert Pupkin, none of these people have any tangible talent, but they have notoriety in spades. And this is indeed the world that the King of Comedy predicted way back in 1982, before there was such a thing as the internet and when the term going viral typically meant an outbreak of gonorrhea. So rest in peace, Jerry Lewis, and thank you for your performance in a film that's far more relevant in 2017 than when it was originally released. For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, if you like that video and you want The Rebel to still keep calling it as it is, please visit StandWithTheRebel.com.